Alan Illman and Philip the Corgi, and we're here to talk to you about abstraction. Abstraction has an opposite specialization. It's all about what's the same and what's different for different kinds of things, different types of elements. So let's get the idea by, let's put, I'll call it element, just an arbitrary name. Let's be say element is equal to one, okay? And let's go ahead and put this element in an array. Let's fill up, oh, I don't know, let's fill up an array with three rows and four columns with this element. And here you see a three by four array or matrix with the number one. Now let's take a close look. You see the information that Julia gives back is that it's a three by four array. It's the number two says it's two dimensional. So one would be a vector, two would be a matrix perhaps, and three would be Maybe they call it a tensor or a three-dimensional array. And the elements are in 64s. And just to be clear, if I take the type of the element, that's the Julia command, it'll tell you that it's an int 64. Now we can go ahead and change things. For example, we could make the element 1.0. Okay, and now look, I've got a three by four array of float 64s now. So the 1.0 is a float type. It's a two-dimensional array still, but it's filled with floats. Maybe we should kind of um, keep track of the numbers that we're putting in. So let's, or at least how about we keep track of the types? So the type of one, the type of 1.0, let's put this itself into an array. And you could see here, oh, let's make it actually a vector. I'll put a comma and we'll make it a vector. Okay. And you can see here that we have an int64 and a float64. And if you wanted to know what is the type of keep track, since it's displayed a little bit differently, you could see that the internal uh, Julia is that it's an array, it's one dimensional, and the elements are data types. So let's go a little bit further and change the element to a string. Let's take the string for one. Okay, and my assistant looks like he has to go somewhere. All right, so now we have, this is, this is the type of the element as a string, and we have a three by four array of the string one. So let's add that as well to our vector, just so that we could keep track. So you see, we have integers, we have, we have floats, and we have strings. And the whole idea is that a computer language shouldn't require any difference between these different data, data types. Here, I'll show you another one. Let's use a rational number. So we can go uh, one divided by one is two slashes in Julia. So that's our element. And here's the three by four array of, and this may be a little bit interesting. It's still the number two, it's two dimensional, but it consists of rationals that are themselves made of in 64s. And so this is a type that's made up of other types. Uh, a composite type, if you will, a rational made up of int 64s. Okay, so let's put that one in here too. And you see we get type of 1, 1. And we'll add that to our list as well. Okay, so we have ints, floats, strings, rational. Now let me stand back a second and point out that at some level, to you, these might all be the number 1, right? In some representation. There's 1, 1.0, 1 the string 1 one slash slash one. You could even think of one in different human languages, like uno in Spanish, or um, the way one writes one with like, to me, it looks like a dash in Chinese, right? And so all of these are representations of the abstract notion of one. Um, on a computer, of course, uh, concretely, every one of these is represented in a different way somehow, even if we think of it all as one. We could go a little further. We can actually go looking for a picture of the number one. I'm gonna look for some images of one. And them look nice. Oh, this one's fun. Here's a cute number one. Download this. Uh, yeah, I just got the URL. I don't have to really look at it. The, 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 the pkg.ed only needed to happen once. So it's actually tempting to put a comment here and a comment here. Okay, but we do need to load the images package. There it is, we've got it. So now, this should work. There we go, and there's that cute little picture of a one. How do you like that? Okay, and let's, while we're at it, let's 
um, what should we call it? Should we call it a, a how about a cute, a cute one? All right, it's a cute one image. So we'll just store it in cute one. And so now what we can do is, and th this is kind of fun, I can go ahead and edit this and call this a cute one, you see. And you'll see that I now have a three by four array of images. Isn't that nice? Now, uh, so you see, just by changing the type, it, it goes and does something a little bit different, but a little bit the same. And imagine what would happen if my element itself was an array. So for example, suppose my element was the array one, two, three, four. What's going to happen now? Well, let's think about that for a moment. So my elements one, two, three, four. And so now I have an array of arrays. And you can see how the nesting is sort of logical. Uh, the, it's a two-dimensional array whose elements themselves are two-dimensional arrays whose elements themselves are in 64s, they're integers. So it displays it in this sort of compact format. You might like that or you may not. Uh, but you can see that the elements are arrays of int 64s. So it kind of makes sense that we could actually add that as well. So if I have the type of, and I put in the 1, 2, 3, 4, you'll see that uh, I now have arrays as element types. All right, let's go further now and make an array of this cute, uh, what was it called, cute one. And let that be the element. And let's take a closer look. We have my three by four array of these images. And let's take a look. The type of the element is itself an array of colors. So let's get this straight. We have an array of images. What's an image? An image is an array of colors. So it's an array of an array of colors, right? A color, by the way, is itself a composite type. It's in RGBA, red, green, blue, alpha, alpha being the opacity uh, of some unsigned integers that are normed in some way, you see? And so I'd like to sum this up by saying that the notion of an array is a container. It's a container that contains elements and the elements could be of many very different types. And soon we're going to see that one can write functions on arrays. And if all goes well, these functions should be independent of the type of the element. In other words, if you wanted to move things around or you wanted to manipulate an array, it shouldn't care about the type of the element, as long as it makes sense. So now you have the notion of abstraction.